WWE announced a significant change to their creative process. In a statement released yesterday, it was announced that WWE has consolidated their creative teams from Raw and SmackDown into one group. Bruce Pritchard will lead the group, while Paul Heyman will now focus on his role as an on-screen performer. In an effort to streamline our creative writing process for television, we have consolidated both teams from Raw and SmackDown into one group led by Bruce Pritchard. Paul Heyman will concentrate on his role as an in-ring performer, which, by the way, he hasn't done any of that since WrestleMania. So I don't know if that means that Lesnar's coming back soon. There's three options. A, Brock Lesnar's coming back soon, which I don't think is going to happen until fans come back. B, Paul Heyman's just going to vanish. He's going to sit at home and do nothing for a while. Or C, maybe they'll give him somebody else to manage. I'm guessing A and C are unlikely to happen. So my guess is that Paul's just going to be sitting at home here for a while. It was announced in June of 2019 that Paul Heyman had been named executive director of Raw. Eric Bischoff was named executive director of SmackDown, but was replaced by Bruce Prichard in October. He, he began and he finished basically in October. Executive director positions were newly created last June. WWE writing that the executive directors would oversee the creative development of WWE's uh, flagship programming and ensure integration across all platforms and lines of business. Heyman's on-screen role is being Brock Lesnar's advocate. Lesnar's unappeared since losing the title to Drew McIntyre at WrestleMania 36. So, basically, when Paul Heyman and... And Eric Bischoff were assigned these jobs. I mean, we all knew that they weren't going to be forever. And we all knew that Eric Bischoff was likely to be canned first. And he was. And quite frankly, he was canned a lot quicker than I thought he was going to be canned. Because one of the things with the announcement of these new positions was WWE was having a tough time i don't mean in terms of like overall revenue but i mean there were questions about the declining ratings there were questions about vince mcmahon starting the xfl there were questions 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 and so this was something they came up with to answer the questions well vince is not going to be in charge of everything eric bischoff's going to be in charge of smackdown paul Heyman's going to be in charge of raw but the reality was that we all knew i don't know about investors but we all knew that they really weren't in charge. It was, it was, you know, Paul Heyman had some power. Eric Bischoff conceivably would have had some power. Bruce Pritchard has some power now. But at the end of the day, everything filters through Vince. You can see it on every single television show. You can see the beginnings of pushes for people like Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. And, I mean, the list, you could probably take an hour to, to list the things that started and then they didn't stop. And they didn't start and stop because Paul Heyman has no memory, and Paul Heyman decides, well, I'm going to start something and not finish it. They all started and stopped because Heyman had an idea. He got a couple of weeks to do it, and then Vince decided he didn't like it. This guy's not getting over. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? So everybody knew at some point Paul Heyman was going to be out. And I think that Bruce Pritchard knows as well as anybody that at some point he is also going to be out. Now, if you look at the raw numbers, if you if you look at the ratings for all of the shows at this point, I mean, Raw's down a lot. SmackDown's down a lot as well. But the decision was made that Pritchard is going to be in charge of both shows. And, I mean, Bruce Pritchard has been part of this WWF machine on and off, WWE forever. I mean, he knows how to write for Vince McMahon. I mean, everybody, everybody... They write for one audience, the audience of Vince. And of the two, Bruce Pritchard writes for Vince McMahon better than Paul Heyman. Bruce understands Vince. Vince understands Bruce. And that's that's where we are right now. I think that Paul Heyman did the best that he could. You know, there were a lot of things on Raw. I, I mean, every week you can watch Raw. And you can pick apart this. And you can pick apart that. But anybody who's putting all of the, the blame on Paul Heyman... Or, or like if SmackDown gets better, anybody puts all the praise on Bruce Pritchard, it's all Vince. If there's stuff that you like, it's Vince. If there's stuff that you don't like, it's Vince. 
And and Heyman had some input, and Bruce Pritchard has some input, but I think it's safe to say that if you enjoy SmackDown more than you enjoy Raw, it's your lucky day. If you enjoyed Raw with the attempt to push new stars, if you like that show more than, than SmackDown, well, today is not your lucky day. And really, the only thing that I want to add to this, and I honestly have no idea if this has anything to do with anything, okay, but... I, I can't help but notice that WWE released a whole bunch of people at a time when they didn't need to. And one of the things, I don't know if everybody noticed this or not, but MVP has gone from a retired wrestler and a mouthpiece to now a full-time wrestler again. And he happened to be a person who was working as both an agent and an on-screen talent. Well, now he's no longer an agent. So my guess is that the deal with MVP was, we don't want to pay you on these two contracts anymore. So it's going to be one or the other. And and we feel you're more valuable as a contract. He's not the only one. Guess who else had a dual contract? Paul Heyman. He had a contract as a performer on screen, and he had the contract here as an executive producer. Bruce Pritchard only had one contract. I mean, this could be there could be nothing to this, but I, I cannot help but notice that we've we've now had at least two and maybe more. I could look around, but at least two people that were on dual contracts that that got one of their jobs taken away from them, so that the company only had to pay on one contract. So that's the gist of the story. We could do your questions later, Jim Valley. Any thoughts? Uh, my first thought when I heard about this was literally not a joke. I hope Bruce Pritchard got a raise. Because if you remember a million years ago, one of the things that brought Ed Ferrara and Vince Russo to WCW was the addition of SmackDown writing, and they didn't get a raise. Um, so literally, I hope Bruce did get a raise. Hard to say if he did or not. Um, I think you make a really valid point about all of the contracts and the fact that they are still making record profits and will make record profits this year and are in such a cost-cutting phase. And you contrast that with um, Linda McMahon writing an article, I believe, in the Washington Post today and uh, going out on the talk show circuit and uh, praising the president and running her super PAC and Vince McMahon being a part of a uh, some sort of um, group task force that never met, I don't think, about restarting the country and business and all of these things. And I think it's telling um by their actions, the faith that they have in the economy and the company. And maybe Dave talked about in The Observer, maybe there is pressure with the ratings that certain networks are not happy right now. But if there was a time to try to experiment with some things and give some people a shot, now is the time.